I know this happens to all of you ladies. You get a little upset when you when you have to entertain people or have company for the weekend. I know that happens to everybody. Well, this gentleman I want you to meet now uh, played host last year, listen to this, to more than 55 million people. He has just been named among the top 10 businessmen in the country in a survey of America's business leaders made by the University of Michigan. He has been called the world's innkeeper and the host of the most. And, and you want to know, Mike? I had the loveliest thing happen. He came to see me when I was in San Francisco oh, at Bimbo's. Great. And everyone was so excited that Conrad Hilton was there. And he couldn't get a room in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like you to welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conrad Hilton. You know, I, I know that uh, I'm reasonably sure that you do not own a hotel in Philadelphia. Am I right? You're, you're right. I don't own a hotel. Not hotel today. Philadelphia. Well, did you come to be on? <laughs> did you come to be on the show, or maybe buy a hotel? <laughs> I really came to to, to buy to, to be on on the show. Oh, that's wonderful, <laughs> and we're delighted to have you here. Is that true that you played host to 55 million people last year? Well, I, I didn't count them, but uh, somewhere around in that neighborhood. Fifty-five. I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of sheets and towels, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Do people still swipe things from the Yes, hotels? they still swipe them, but we uh, we don't worry about it anymore because we know they're going to swipe them anyway. No, no. Are you insured <laughs> against something like that, or or do you just no? We just is that no, figured into the, the bill? That's, it's figured. It's figured part of the expense of running the hotel, but they're going to swipe <laughs> that. Is now, do you know in advance? Does the maid tip you off that certain people have taken bath mats and things? Uh, they, they, no, not a mat, not a, a bath mat or something. But if there's a uh, painting or something missing, they'll have, they, they'll tell us. <laughs> oh, they no, no. screw them into the wall, Mike. Cause I tried. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He screws them into the wall, and the lamps are screwed into the table. Can I can I ask you a thing? Did, did you ever do anything like that to a competitor when you go to their hotels? Did you ever take any of their towels? No, I don't want any of their towels. <laughs> How long have you been in the hotel business, sir? Well, I've been actively in the hotel business since uh, 1920. May I ask how old you are, sir? Let's see, I've forgotten exactly how old I, I am. Uh, I'm old enough. <laughs> very nice. That's very nice. How, how did the whole thing start? Would you tell us the story of how you got started? Well, right, right after World War I, um, I went up to see a friend of mine in... Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, where I was born. I was born in a little town uh, south of Albuquerque. And this man was a good friend of mine, and uh, he had TB, and uh, as I sat and talked to him, he said to me, I'm not long for this world. The good Lord is going to take me soon, and I want to say this to you, that if you will go to Texas, you are going to make your wealth. And, uh, and he was such an just, impressive... Just any place in Texas? Or just, just Texas. Te just Texas, I Just see. Texas, he said. And there was a, a big oil boom going on in Texas over a, a great portion of Texas. So I took up his word. Did you have and any money at the time to invest? I had a, a little money. Mm -hmm. uh, I probably had $5,000. It was a lot of money then. Well, it? it was a bit weird, yes, maybe it was a lot. Uncle Sam was just paying me 160 a month, but I was, uh, uh, I had uh, earned some money before that. Selling towels? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a dream about this sort of thing or, or a particular goal? Well, in life I tell you, I, uh, it, this, it was such an impression on me that I went down there and I thought, I went into the first town I went into was Wichita Falls, Texas, and I went around to a bank and... Uh, asked if they would sell the bank. Not, not a large bank, you know, uh, but a, a, just an ordinary sized bank. And he says, no, he says, there's uh, not enough money to buy my bank. He says, but why don't you go to those southern oil fields? He says, there's a lot that's going on down there near Ranger and Cisco. So I did. I went down there and uh, one evening I went into uh, uh, a hotel and it was just booming. There were people coming in and out, and I met the, introduced myself to the manager, and he told me, uh, 
how, how much he could make, how much he was making, and how much he could make if he was out in the oil fields. So I thought, uh, would you mind telling me how much you're making? And he, he says, I'll tell you. He says, I'm making $2,000 a month. And this was a 40-room hotel. So the next day, I sent a man over to see him, a real estate dealer, and I said, see what you can buy that hotel for me. So he came back to me, he says, you can buy it for 50000 I said, no, 40000 I'll give him 40000 for it. That was for the land, the building, and everything else. It only had 40 rooms. Mm -hmm. So two days later, he knocked at my door, and I said, come in. He says, I bought you a hotel. Now, that's how I really started in the hotel. Business. And you only See, had $5,000 to put down on it. I only had $5,000, yes. But that, you but must have been I a very knew, good businessman. Well, I tell you, I knew that I could, I had friends that had money, and I knew I could get uh, uh, others to uh, invest put some money with me, and my mother put in $5,000, and it wasn't, it wasn't too hard to get the $40,000 together. You know, over the years, uh, you've had many famous guests. Do you have any favorite stories about famous guests that you've had in your hotels? Well, uh, I remember uh, uh, when Queen Elizabeth came over, I, uh, being the uh, protocol required that the uh, uh, biggest one in our organization should uh, take her and squat her up to her room, so I did, and they had a little party later, and uh, Philip was there too, and so I said to the Her Majesty, do you know that we have a hotel named after you? And she said, no. I, I said, the Queen Elizabeth in Montreal, Canada. Oh, and I said, would you like to have a picture of it? She says, yes, she would. So I gave her, gave her a picture. And I talked to Philip and I said, you know, we're trying to build a hotel in London, but we're having a terrible time getting a permit. He says, oh, I know, they're so stuffy over there. <laughs> 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 so you look in, in, in just great shape. How, how do you do it? Well, thank you. That's it a very really nice does. compliment. It does, doesn't and, it? And, uh, uh, <laughs> you live in Philadelphia. I live in Los Angeles. Maybe we have more sunshine out there than you have here. Is that right? A little bit, <laughs> I think, yes. But what do you attribute it to? Why are you in such great shape? Well, I you exercise uh, a lot. I, I, do, I do exercise. I play golf and I ride uh, horseback, mm -hmm. and I dance. I like to dance. What? Yes, what? yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sound like you dance often. Is it? Is it a thing? Mike, I do. Do you? I Mike, I happened to be on board one time when he opened his San Francisco hotel and he danced with his granddaughter that night. Oh, there. that's marvelous! Yes, it is. Do you have a favorite dancing partner? Well, I've had some quite. Uh, favorite dancing partners. I've had uh, uh, Ann Miller. She's uh, a very fine dancer. And uh, Vera Ellen. She, she's a very good dancer. And uh, I've had uh, uh, my administrative assistant, Ollie Wakeman. Mm -hmm. uh, she's danced with me around the world. Mm -hmm. And I've been dancing uh, a dance that I learned in New Mexico that was, was a dance there. It's called uh, La Varsuviana. Well, would you demonstrate it now? Because you, your favorite dancing partner that you just mentioned is right here well, with us. Yes, I will. Her <laughs> name is Mrs. Olive Wakeman. Mrs. Olive Wakeman.
Mr. Hilton, do you ever plan to retire? No, I don't plan to retire. Why not? I, because I'm happy doing what I'm doing, and I got a lot of things to do, and I don't plan to retire. That's right. That's great. Do you have Do you have a personal philosophy of life? Uh, yes, I have uh, a personal philosophy of life, and um, I have been. Um, Worried like you have and a lot of other people worried about the conditions in the world and in our uh, International hotels we have a slogan uh, That we hope to uh, It's gonna help and it is uh, through travel world peace and so uh, we're going around the world and it reminds me that in uh, in Turkey once when it was introduced over there and when they give you a cup of coffee this commits you to 30 years of friendship see if you drink that cup of coffee with them all that's nice so we're drinking that proverbial cup of coffee around oh, the world that's, we wonderful. Try to get. that's wonderful you know uh, I, I know that in your books there's a very special prayer and uh, you wrote the prayer and it's called America on its knees tell us how that came about that prayer would you well that came about uh, I know everyone has seen this book, Be My Guest, by Conrad Hilton. Uh, it came about by my thinking about the situation that it was, and the idea came to me. I said, what can I do about it? So one day, I was uh, coming to Chicago, and I saw a cartoon in the Chicago Daily News, and it had a picture of Uncle Sam and his desk was just huddled, and he had a terrible, worried look on his face. And on the wall was a picture of Abraham Lincoln. And it said this in the cartoon. It said, have you ever thought of prayer, Sam? And I said, that's the idea that I should have. A prayer, but how am I going to get the prayer? And how am I going to get the Uncle Sam that I want? See, I have to have both the prayer and the Uncle Sam. Mm -hmm. So I started out with that in view. I said, this is what I want to do, is to get, the, get, get that prayer and get a, somebody to paint me an Uncle Sam, the kind of an Uncle Sam that I'm thinking of. An ordinary man, not a military man, just a man, a citizen, father of children. And so I finally did get the prayer. Would, you, it, would you read the prayer for us now? Yes, Sam? I'll read Please. the prayer for you. Mr. We have been like a child who has lost his father's hand in the traffic of a busy crossing. The noise and confusion frighten him. He is lost. He is in terror. Then suddenly he sees his father. He rushes to him, takes his hand, and all fear is gone. We are like that child. We are lost in a terrifying confusion of events, and we can never know peace or have confidence in our hearts until once again we ha find the hand of our Father who is in heaven. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you save us from ourselves. The world that you've made for us to live in peace, we have made into an armed camp. We live in fear of war to come. We are afraid of the terror that flies by night and the arrow that flies by day, the pestilence that walks in darkness, and the distraction that wastes at noonday. We have turned from you to go our selfish ways. We have failed to honor your commandments. We have left your altars to serve the false gods of money and pleasure and power. Forgive us and help us. Now darkness gathers around us and we are confused in all our counsels. Losing faith in you, we lose faith in ourselves. Inspire us with wisdom, all of us, of every color, race, and creed, to use our wealth, our strength, to help our brother instead of destroying him. Help us to do your will as it is done in heaven and to be worthy of your promise of peace on earth. Fill us with new faith, new strength, 
and new courage that we may bin, win the battle for peace. Be swift to save us, dear God, before the darkness falls. The old Mobley Hotel.